Welcome to Empower to Grow, the podcast. I am your host, Hanan Al Basha, the business doctor. Following our conversations with empowered women who woke up one day and consciously claimed, I am more than enough, I am worthy, I am empowered to grow. And along their empowering journey towards realizing their own potential and their quest for growth, they became a beacon of hope and guidance for others. May you also find your inner power to grow. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Empower to Grow podcast. This is your host, Hanan al Bashar. Today, I'm joined by um, a first timer on the podcast, but more importantly, first time for us to meet, but very, very intriguing lady, Mary Bassan. Welcome, first of all. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hanan. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. Why I say Mary's intriguing, especially for me, and I know for a lot of you, Mary specializes in women midlife transformative transformation expert. And that, of course, as, as you all know, I've been talking about transformation for a long time. And I've been talking always about the concepts of that we have a choice in life. And that in itself is very important. And that's why for me, Mary was a definite, please let's have this conversation and to get you on the show as soon as possible. So thank you so much for accepting the invite. Thank you. So Mary, I always start with the concept of empowered to grow. And I ask, how does this phrase resonate with you? I love it. One of the things that I say to my clients all the time is that we're either growing or we're withering. There's no static in this universe. Everything is always changing. So in what way is it changing? Are we expanding or are we not? So I believe that when we know our worth, when we truly understand that we are enough, then we can feel empowered to grow. I think that it's easy to get caught in victim mindsets. And when yes. we do that, we won't necessarily be focusing on growth. We'll be more focused on the past so I really love the phrase, and I think it starts with knowing that you are valuable and that you deserve to grow. Funny enough, I was just having a conversation now. I had a meeting with my two business partners, um, In we have the Global Businesswoman, and one of them we were talking about that we were saying, you are worthy of growing, you're worthy of setting your boundaries, you're worthy of understanding your own worthiness. So yes. you don't compromise your time and your energy for, you know, whether the circumstances or people around you that just literally suck the breath out of you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so from that concept, Mary, you, you're not only empowered to grow yourself, but you also, your mission is to empower others to grow. So can you tell us a bit more about your story, please? Yes. So my story, I believe, like all of ours, started in childhood. I didn't have the most stable childhood. And there was um, there was a lot of uh, emotional trauma and a lot of, as it was called back in the day, discipline. Yes. And, <laughs> and yep. that led me to feel that I wasn't good enough. It led me to feel ashamed a lot. And I vowed at a pretty young age that I would have a different life, that I would have a life that had stability and that had um, safety and security. And so when I was 14 years old, reading all kinds of different books, I read a book that changed my life. And it's not one that you would typically think would be that kind of a book. It was called how to buy stocks. And it was by Ooh, Peter Lynch. <laughs> and I, when I read this book, I said, Oh, my gosh, he makes it so clear and so easy. This is how you can make money in the stock market. And I, I think I can do this. This makes sense. I'll go to Wall Street, I'll make a lot of money in stocks, I'll be safe, I'll be secure. And I'll have a great life. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what I designed for myself. I studied yeah. finance and economics in college. I went to Wall Street right when I graduated and I became um, a quick up and comer 
research analyst and mm -hmm. did very, very well with that. And then became co-head of US equity research for Deutsche Bank mm -hmm. and was co-managing a pretty big department and had a budget, you know, $400 million and a super busy life. And I was identifying with two things, my paycheck and my title. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> then my husband said, you know what, we need to have kids and we can't do it with you living this life. So let's, let's change this. Yeah. And it was really scary to me. I was afraid of giving up those attachments to, to the, those ego based external yes. things. Yes. And, and I was also afraid of trusting, even though I loved my husband and I totally trusted him, I hadn't relied on anyone to take care of me financially ever. And that was scary to me. And so I did a deep dive into personal growth. And that led me to a Tony Robbins event where I saw Tony taking people from suicidal to joyful in 45 minutes. And Huge my fan, by the way, and students. So yes, <laughs> I knew we resonated for so many reasons. <laughs> well, when I saw that, my entire body just said, yes, this is what I'm made to do. I have to learn how to do this. And if I learn how to do this, I'll be a good parent. I will know how to raise kids in a healthy way. And so I did that and that has been incredible. This is, this is what I'm here for. I'm on a mission to help 10,000 women transform. And we come to this stage in life sometimes, you know, after having children or sometimes after children leave home and there are all these stressors, mm -hmm. you know, we're often working, we're taking care of so many people maybe yeah. aging parents are in the mix as well. And, and it's a lot. And so mm -hmm. I like to help women take control of their nervous systems and take control of their brains so that they can handle it all. And that they can also be joyful and in touch with themselves and their own goals. I love that. I love that. And, and as I said, I think at the beginning, just before we start recording, it is much needed because I know that, you know, I went through the same phases of, okay, I'm done with the career. I'm done with the building businesses. I'm done with the, even the academically, I'm done with the doctor degree. And it was like, now what? And that is the point where I stopped and said, I need to work on myself. And yes, as well, um, asking money for my husband or accepting actually money for my husband was a big thing. Cause I've been working since I was 18, since I was college. And it was like, Oh my God, you know, it was complete breakdown for me because I'm always been financially independent. Um, but then mm -hmm. accepting that and then building up myself again alongside this, this has been a whole yes. new journey as well. So from where you stand now, and I know you said you set your goals way, way back then from where you stand now, what advice would you go back and impart on your 19 year old self? Wow. That was a long time ago. <laughs> I would tell her, I would tell her that it's really important to know that no matter what you've been through, no matter what you've experienced in life, how you've been treated, no matter what emotions you felt as a re, in, in relation to that, there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with you. And yeah. when we are hurt by other people, it's because they were trying to meet their own needs, albeit not in a healthy way, or maybe they didn't have good impulse control, or maybe they were acting out their own wounds or their own programs. And we can rise up, we can reclaim our power, we can reframe what happened to us, and we can use it as fuel, maybe without um, as much desperation as I had back then, you know, yeah. like being desperate to achieve, to, to become someone. To, well, yeah. that, that's, I think, very, very valid there. And as you said, it's, um, it's kind of really starts with the acceptance as well of oneself. 
and understanding that we are worthy no matter what. And that is a lesson right. that you learn much later in life. <laughs> yes. Okay. The other end of the spectrum, then your 90 year old self, nine zero. What would you like her to thank you for today? Oh, I would like to, I, I would imagine that she will be thankful that she took care of herself, that she allowed herself to follow her mission and do her work while being relaxed and joyful, mm -hmm. while helping at least 10,000 other women have amazing transformations after 40 and really just be grateful that she got to live life to the fullest and bring that. others with her. Yep, exactly. It's coming from a place of service, but also living life to your fullest. And and I like to think of, you know, becoming the best version of ourselves, but also living up to our potential, which is limitless most of the time. Yes. Okay. So our final question, you are standing on a stage and you are talking to tens of thousands of women. And the topic is about being empowered to grow. What is that lasting message you leave them with? The message that I leave them with is that they have so much potential in them. We are wired for strength. We are wired for resilience. If we think about what our ancestors have been through, we can do so much more than we want. What we have to remember is not to believe the stupid thoughts that pop into our head. Lots of stupid thoughts pop in. We can question them. We can turn them around. We can prove that they're wrong. We can even laugh at them at times. And we can also make friends with that inner critic. She's hmm. in there and she's scared. She doesn't want us to make a mistake. She doesn't want us to ever look bad. So she tries to stop us from doing things. We can get grateful to her, thank her for wanting yeah. us to save and let her know that it's okay. We are going to grow. We are going to step out of our comfort zone. That mm -hmm. is how we grow. And it's okay. I like that. It's okay to grow because I think giving ourselves permission is something we've got to learn as well, because we weren't taught that. That's not how we're conditioned. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mary, thank you so much. This has been intense in a way that I think people will need some time to dissect everything. And I think, as you said, just give themselves permission to grow and to transform. Um, where can our viewers and listeners find you in virtual space? On my website, which is Mary, M-A-R-I, Vassan, V-A-S-A-N, dot com. Okay. And that's where and also uh, everything you do. Social media. <laughs> And, and you're on Sorry. Instagram, and Facebook, Inst um, I'm on, yeah, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn as well. Great. And we'll be including your links anyway, but I love for people who are listening, maybe they could check you out right away. Mary, thank you so Perfect. much. And I know we're still going to continue our conversation, but um, thank you for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge and your energy with us. Thank you, Hanan. And thank you for doing this important work. Thank you. Well, give yourself permission to grow and to transform. You put in the work and you get out the best potential that you can. So we're going to continue our conversation. But until next time, I wish you love, abundance and prosperity. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Empowered to Grow podcast. For further engagement with a tribe of empowered women, join my Facebook group, Empowered to Grow, or visit my website, www.hananelbasha.com. I'll catch you on the next episode. And until then, know that empowered you empowers others. Love, abundance, and prosperity to you all.